Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootleg yourselves, death slayers, best, fastest, 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 fastest. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, let's go back to the Ukraine. Uh, in my last video, of course, a lot of things have happened. I hesitated to uh, characterize what was going on there as a civil war in more of a rebellion. And uh, I, it seems, for me anyway, I still have a hard time characterizing it, although uh, it certainly is on the very brink of what one would consider a civil war. And certainly by uh, a lot of measures, it could be called a civil war that is progressing at this moment. Certainly some real key ingredients have emerged. Uh, we have two uh, regions, Donetsk and Luhansk, that have uh, seceded ostensibly from the Ukraine and become independent republics. And they've called on Russia to annex and um, everything is still uh, in motion right now. The end result will probably be a diplomatic solution uh, where uh, Ukraine will stay intact, but uh, there'll be a lot more autonomy for certain regions and that could certainly uh, spread to some other areas as well. And uh, most uh, Russians uh, I mean, most Ukrainians, even in that region, uh, prefer to stay with Ukraine, apparently according to polls. And some of these numbers that they're giving out about the uh, referendum results are dubious uh, from both sides. Uh, so roughly, supposedly 95% people uh, who voted, uh, voted for secession. And that comes as no surprise. They're going to be the most motivated element to go out there and do it and certainly take the risks involved. And uh, there's no uh, actual numbers for turnout that I've seen, um, so we don't really know. And uh, it's pretty easy to manipulate uh, the media to give the impression of whatever kind of crowds are necessary for whatever agenda is being put across. But uh, as I say, I still see that uh, most of the people in these uh, breakaway regions still want to remain part of Ukraine. And uh, it will be interesting to see if their voices are heard or not. Um, that would seem to set up the more of a likelihood for federation. And also because um, a fifth of Ukraine's economy is based on those regions. There's a lot of mining, a lot of heavy industry. And uh, as in all of these uh, entanglements with Russia, they get very complex and everybody has a lot to lose. And in fact, it's rather interesting that uh, Russia uh, al almost doesn't need any U.S. sanctions to to do any economic damage. Just the fact that uh, Ukraine is in the state that it's in has cost Russia plenty. I've heard some figures thrown around of $150 billion or some uh, amount of money. It's probably hard to measure uh, how much damage is being done to the Russian economy. And like I say, I think the United States has a lot more interest in creating a failed state in Ukraine than, the Soviet, uh, than Russia does. Uh, Russia would like to have a stable Ukraine continue these economic relations where uh, the United States seems like uh, they would like to have a, a lot of disruption, perhaps a failed state in Ukraine in order to do as much damage to Russia as possible. Um, and, and, and also we see the fact that the, the referendum and the separatists had their own agenda. And this is something I also uh, brought up in the previous video. It doesn't really seem necessary uh, for any uh, Russian agents to be involved in uh, Ukraine, because there's enough pro-Russian um, and a lot of trained uh, activists, um, armed uh, pro-Russians in those regions to carry off uh, the kind of rebellions we've seen on the scale we've seen in uh, in, in that area now. Um, and uh, in the Donetsk struggle so far, we've had 40 dead and 245 wounded, and that that's, uh, certainly that body count would uh, seem to support the idea that we have a, either a civil war or the beginnings of a civil war. Um, it's hard to say whether things will escalate. The, the violence tends to uh, escalate as uh, the, these violent events continue to galvanize the two sides and continues to separate them. And the more violent uh, we see, uh, the more we'll see this kind of reaction, although having the Odessa uh, massacre happen the way it did uh, certainly is, uh, gives a lot of incentive for uh, uh, more violence, or one could argue the fact that there hasn't been a lot more since then is rather striking. But uh, now we have this new uh, uh, attack 
uh, some Ukrainian soldiers, uh, many were killed, wounded, something like eight killed, and uh, in an ambush uh, by pro-Russian forces. And uh, I'll attach a video below about that. So when you look at these uh, images, it certainly bespeaks of a war. And uh, uh, the Kiev government has now unleashed a war on uh, the east, uh, eastern provinces because they're they're bringing in military forces and they're bringing in military equipment and um, um, they're trying to be bringing in overwhelming odds. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. So, um, and this is all timed, uh, of course, with the uh, presidential election as well coming up on May 25th. And uh, these eastern regions say they'll boycott that. Um, so that will be uh, another disruption and we could see some more violence leading up to that. Um, so is, is Russia going to come to the defense? It doesn't look so at this point. Russia's have gotten, gotten what it could legitimately claim and uh, would have a, a hard problem. It seems strategically smart for them to not uh, have any designs on these uh, eastern Ukraine regions. And, and I think that's the way it'll play out. I really don't think they have any interest. But um, depending on what kind of events unfold, um, this could change quickly, uh, of course. Uh, the Ukrainian rhetoric about being at war with Russia, of course, is just the same kind of ludicrous uh, uh, warmongering and media exploitation we see here in the United States in order to, to, to perpetrate an agenda. Uh, so uh, U.S. media getting everything distorted and hyped up and uh, the Ukrainian government, uh, already a United States puppet government, is uh, using the same rhetoric to amp things up. Um, and um, and then overall, uh, we have these economic disruptions. And um, that's another thing that everyone has to keep in mind, both uh, uh, Russia and the United States and the Eurozone. Uh, there's a lot of precarious inner uh, connections. And I brought this up in video after video after video. In a globalized environment, uh, these economic ties are, are the dominant factor. That is the, the fact of our time. And, and in fact, we're finding more and more battlefields, our financial battlefields, and uh, that reflects our time. It's a financialized age, and uh, therefore these uh, globalized interconnections make this all very complicated for everyone. But I'll be doing uh, another video about uh, just that sort of um, idea. And um, uh, one of the other things that could be uh, a galvanizing factors if we have figures emerge like uh, the uh, Igor Gherkin, who was named the head of rebel forces in the Donetsk region, and he ordered all Ukrainian government troops and police to submit to his command or leave the region within 48 hours. And um, so that is uh, fairly provocative, and if uh, they mean business, then that obviously could create uh, more violence very quickly, and uh, this could be very, very clearly become a civil war uh, um, if we see violence escalate on a broad uh, scale. Uh, and it's interesting as well to see that the uh, the pro-Russian uh, separatists um, said that the rebels, uh, them, they will start a, quote, anti-terrorist operation, unquote, against the Ukrainian military if the deadline is ignored. So here we go again, the uh, catchword of the late 20th century and now will dominate the 21st century that anybody who is your enemy now is a, is a terrorist. And, uh, uh, countries and governments all over the world will use the, the idea that they're fighting terrorists to circumvent all kinds of laws and uh, human rights, uh, unfortunate sign of the times. So, uh, and then uh, another interesting fact about uh, the way things are unfolding in, these, is in Ukraine is originally uh, a lot of the oligarchs, uh, the ones who control all these major assets in the eastern Ukrainian uh, provinces, uh, they didn't support um, the referendum. They didn't support uh, the separatist movement. But now that it's actually happened, of course, they're hedging their bets. And now they're all supporting uh, the separatist movement. And a lot of it is a fear of uh, nationalization and other unforeseen consequences. But uh, I'm sure uh, all in all it will get ironed out uh, in, uh, diplomatically. But in the meantime, I'm sure there's plenty more fireworks. So... What do we have here? Do we have a, a civil war? We have a war, um, whether it's civil or not, is up in the air. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.